or Enigma, one of the two. I believe oh, the first pick two times yeah. for uh, E-Home, by the way, so that would mean that Secret favors Dire. I agree, those are um, yep. both some of the most natural counters, right, to the old Faceless Void carry. Yeah. Um, be able to get some good uh, AoE counter initiation into your hand. I, I really think that Furion's the, the best pick up here. I think that He's when Sinran was talking about the uniqueness of the hero and what it really brings to this patch, um, I think that was perfectly on point. And oh, oh, okay. Um, that is uh, to counter the vision yeah. game that Beast Monster offered earlier. Well, it's also a pretty good opening against Furion. During the mid game, it makes it very difficult to do what you want to do, which is kind of well split as up the void. map. Yeah, it it's nice to avoid confrontation and also to make split pushers less likely to do what they want. Most of the times when you see a first pick that is not considered a first phase pick is when you've identified that Ten there are so many top tier heroes in the pool that you can always get a trade that you're happy with. Mm -hmm. And then you just... Five formation. This is like, remaining. think of this as them giving Secret the first pick instead. Now they're just passing it on, and then they want to have the counter pick and then close out phase one. But if they pick profit now, they give more information, I guess, Ten than picking an S, but I don't know if Secret actually care that much. They get their jungler, I still think they can get profit, they can also get tied. Both of them are good against uh, Night Sucker. I think Night Sucker is tied in a. I think Night Sucker is going to be the mo one of the most, um, say the most successful four position in the game. They, the just the way that the Tide nighttime Hunter. hit that four minutes and the uh, Iron Talon introduction. In it's just there's so many different small boosts to Night Stalker that make him um, really valuable as a as a four position rather than the old offlane position which was committing one of your cores to utility which you uh, may or may not want to do uh, anymore but if you can commit one of your supports that heavy kind of uh, control and utility that Night Stalker offers it's a huge advantage both in mid and late game I don't think this is the no I really yeah, don't because think. if it's a four position Night Stalker I mean Lanham's gonna be group big then it's so much about what they get for themselves, it's what they're against. It doesn't... Mm -hmm. Night Stalker Rubik... Remaining. Rubik is great for those flashy, memorable plays where you like, steal Black Hole and you win the team fight. Yeah, or you steal Rubik's wet dream is right here. Turn the way Secret are playing with the two heroes is that they get items and then they just go in and they technically don't even need to cast their spells. They can just stand frontline with Tide and he's like, haha, your team actually can't engage into me, so whatever, we'll just take your tower while I'm standing in the front and looking stupid. And these back. heroes right now don't team fight very well and they don't that much pressure on the lane. So now Enigma can free jungle. These two are indeed the supports from Ehome. You've got Night Stalker Rubik. They're not good in the first four minutes. Now they could, the tide off plan will be fine. Enigma will farm jungle, and Ehome will go toward a, an early portion of the mid game where they're just innately at a disadvantage. I feel. Earlier today against CDC, uh, they had two games in a row where they picked Night Stalker two games in a row. One game for Eleven, one game for Kaka. So they can't switch. They could play it off lane. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it I might think... be a better choice. Yeah. Um, I think that Rubik pick up. Really makes me feel like you Teams have to put the Night Stalker at the off. And they won the game where they had Night Stalker offline as well, even though Eleven did not do very well. It's like Ehome almost need like a gyro or something. I mean, they can actually. Oh, that might be a pick secret. Seconds, now. Very remaining. early. I actually like that grab a lot. Too. Five seconds remaining. What other core position for Ehome can actually fight into this? Is yeah. that I mean, the problem with Jug is you spin and you get hit by like an entire team basically, and it doesn't matter if you're spinning if they have early mech, which Puppy will have his mech like prior to 10 minutes if he gets a free jungle. How fast you have it. Might and be. Omni Slash is also garbage against five men. Like yeah. it's it's completely terrible. Oh. Time. Team secrets. E home going for a bounty hunter and just trying to mess with Enigma, but I think it's scary too until you see the secondary support from Secret. That's one that can't really punish Bounty for doing it, then they definitely get away with it. And then try to put Rubik plus one strong hero bottom, and since Bounty is keeping Enigma away, Night Stalker should be able to get something one and two off. Very curious to see which direction it goes. Last time they had this, I think they went Spectre fifth pick for Envy. In that yeah, game. but I got banned so, out here. Um, that one is gone, but they could still go for another hard carry. They could think of something that counters to Morphling, but something along the lines of a hero that comes online late, but they just enable. And one of the like interesting it. things is that uh, okay. I mean, Night Sucker and Rubik are acceptable heroes again. This time around, the Ember Spirit was not banned in the 3 oh, 4. Yeah. Really considered. Although now, if you know, if you, as e home, you know that you're going to deal with an Enigma who's going to be in the jungle for the first few minutes. Is it an option to go for an aggressive tri lane so that you know that you can shut down Envy on whichever heroes he'll play? Rubik is not an aggressive it tri lane is, hero most of the 
is possible, but then you're leaving Tide 1 on 1, so he will get fast yeah. level 6, and you're yeah. leaving Enigma alone in the jungle, so he will get fast level 6 in mech. Then you, we actually saw that attempt earlier today by CDEC, where they ran the Enchantress, super yeah. aggression on Envy, shut down yeah. or his clinks completely. What's the matter? Tide got levels and farm, and Enigma got levels and farm, and then clinks in that game actually didn't, it seemed like almost didn't need to have anything, and they could... Yeah, they kind of won for so it, it's, it's Difficult proposition. I think it's way better to play it less as a two and a half, where the half is the guy running after Enigma, because then you have the chance of having a presence top and countering out the Enigma at the same time. Lion. And this opens I think. Lion is not very strong early on. They want to run the bounty. This is the type of game to do it in, I think. Great synergy with Night Stalker too. They kind of overlap. They want to do it in the early mid game, just super kill hungry. Gives Night Stalker haste, basically hero's track. Yeah, and you do want to get a, a lineup that is pretty pickoff heavy and isn't uh, really cooldown strict. That way you can punish Team Secret longer cooldowns. Ten seconds remaining. At the same time, that uh, lion might also be a uh, counter pick, as uh, we had Lanham play a lion earlier today that was insane, and he paired it up together with Eleven Night Stalker, and they just ran around and killed. Him. Oh, that was a very strong combination. I was, but I there was you actually, go. I was Team thinking about two heroes, and it was Warlock and Phoenix, and. The reason is, if, if you want to fight Secret head-on, if you want to be able to try to defend your towers, you need to have teamfight abilities that don't commit your hero. Yes. So, Warlock Ultimate is great. You obviously don't move in, you cast far away. And Phoenix is great because Sunray will deal a lot of the initial damage, and then the heroes of Secret actually suck against Super. They're yep. really bad. Bad mm -hmm. attack speed, Tidehunter is melee, Lion can't tank the egg most of the time if he does any damage to anyone. Remaining. I could see Ehome taking direction now. Five On it, they still have their Void place. available. To uh, Clinks, uh, I felt that was probably one of the best pickups that uh, Team T could go for. There are um, certain, we were talking about like letting your carries play their, their kind of play style, mm -hmm. and Team Secret is definitely um, one of those teams that lets Eternal Envy play his carries. Definitely one of um, his first and foremost. Put the damper on the potential Phoenix that actually would have been a quite strong aggro dual lane and that pickup. So a lot to do with the fact too that if you if you look at Team Secret's lineup, they have a Enigma jungle, so Five you kinda need a self sufficient remaining. safe laner. And they mm -hmm. also noted that the lion is kind of a weak solo support in the sense that if for instance like uh Cinder was Seven saying if they wanted to pick Bounty Hunter, you need some safe laner who doesn't need help. And I think Clinks is pretty much one of the only heroes in the pool who can really offer that. And plus a good way to pick off heroes quickly like Rubik for example, like during a team fight, just not have to worry about the spell steal, just kill him. He gets a hex by Lion or shot a few times by Clinks instead. This is also uh, really damn good against not only the Phoenix but also the en Enchantress, which may have been um, something that Ehome were thinking about. That's also um, a common strategy in when you're dealing with Enigmas is to run an aggressive jungler Enchantress and shut out the, the Enigma because you really just can't fight. This pick is super risky in my opinion. I know you have Warlock for AoE teamfight, but Banking a lot on that. And plus, mm -hmm. we haven't seen... I guess it's going to be mid-Warlock, right? That's what they... It was run earlier as? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Core position. So, you're going to have pretty early Golem. You're going to have Night Stalker probably off lane at this point. Time. Then a Morphling who's going to still have that really weird 15 to like 25 minute timing where he's not really going to contribute in a big way to fights. And Team Secret have insane 5 man and the ability to push towers relatively quick. Like, just having a Clinks on your team with Enigma, that's enough power push. Like, you don't actually need anything other than that. So, really, as Dire, like, they can even go for Grosh. I feel like Team yeah. Secret can very easily snowball this. It's kind of crazy, actually. Tidehunter, like, uh, in the Ravage aspect, is not good versus Morphling, but Anchor Smash is actually very good versus Five seconds remaining. All percentage damage reduction. The reason I started thinking about profit is that I'm just if you're e-home now, what you're banking on the Morphling is reaching late game. You're yeah. gonna defend high ground with Warlock and with like you can Fate Bolt spam out, maybe you can your last hero can get some sort of wave clear too. But I just don't see Secret just like say minute fifteen, they have the Aegis and they just start five manning down the lane. Trade. The other thing they put their pressure they have a Morphling only. Yeah. To split push. The other heroes do nothing to buildings. And they don't have any hero who actually, like besides the Night Stalker, they don't have anybody who helps them create space. Nobody no. really disrupts the farm of the Enigma. Nobody forces any rotations out from Team Secret. It just feels like a very passive laning phase. Like Morphling Warlock, heroes don't move around. They don't do anything. They sit in their lane and they hit creeps. Team Warlock's turn to pick. 
last time I think he went two four three when I saw his and of course ult. I think as a core position where like you kinda need to max heal though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. I but over upheaval. I think oh, they okay, need okay, the okay, damage. Yeah. Fatal bonds. It's a, I don't you can't remove it with crystal either. So you have like yeah. something that stays in the fight and there's plenty of ways for it to jump when there's Eidolons or Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I guess it's only Eidolons here. The creep wave itself as well. Ooh. Oh, the haven't Wii, seen that in a while. Wii Ranger. Oh, I like that. Secret classic. Probably one of the only teams who would be willing to run Win Ranger right now. Just not one of the. It's like one of the worst mids. But uh, it is most played hero. Fourteen to ten with a fifty-eight percent win rate. I haven't seen much of it though. Danying. Yeah. Kind of put it in park for a while. Mm -hmm. Dusting that one off. Feel like it's the right pick here. Ten seconds remaining. Okay, um, that might have been a better choice, Five perhaps, but it's not remaining. bad. It's not. If you look at Ehome's picks, it's a hero. It's what I was talking about. We needs to be self. Reserve it's a hero that's time. difficult for Ehome to gank. So at least they have a mid laner now who's playing against Warlock, who doesn't have top ten lane alone. And even with the help, they might not even. Rubik rotes in. They might not even kill the Wind Ranger. If it's like two heroes. I like that. I think Puck could have maybe been a better choice. Does uh, we play much Puck though? Three. I think he does oh. play. Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. So this is something that Ehome uh, did a lot in previous patches, but I don't think this was the hero. They. Disruptor works well off of aggressive lineups, and he pairs really well with Night Stalker for multiple reasons. And it's an aggressive hero, it takes map control, and it gives you extra vision. Right? Those are all three excellent things, but I don't think the rest of the lineup is aggressive enough really, to be able to follow that up, to ensure that they're in a commanding position to get those strong kind of glimpses. I think it's mainly the, the synergy with the NS that makes it strong. You know, yeah. like it, you can use the vision advantage to try to go for picks. You can smoke around nighttime, and you can find picks on heroes before they can even see you. Like literally, you just get a glimpse onto them; they're dead. And that kind of kind of pick off can allow you to keep yourself in the game and maybe make it to that late game stage that they're going to be looking for with the morphling. So, but we're going to hit that point in time, right? Where we're talking about the where the morphling's down, and if warlock golems are also down, they don't win fights. No, I, I agree and, with and, that. Completely. And for me, like disruptor's such a Five bad hero. Remaining. So, uh, from a support position when you're playing defensively. And the enemy team's trying to push into you. So, previous game, you all said secret. Are you going to say that again? Are you going to be uh, uniform? I think so. I think secret. Dakota? Hard not to say secret. I think their draft is fair. Uh, we should mention for the well, the counter to Tide with yeah, of course. Doesn't it counter a black hole as well? Long range can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Are you secret too? Secret. Sure. Okay. Can they do a two-zero? It yeah. is time for game two. Secret versus Ehome with Od Pixel and. With Indeed, ladies and gentlemen, here we are back with uh, DC versus Chinese characters. I'm sure that's not right. And uh, there we go. That's what happens if you can't cast. They put you in that room. And I don't even know if you guys can hear me at the moment. Hopefully. Otherwise my flames are wasted. Here we go. Ehome versus C. I'm sure you can hear me now. If you can't... Oh, yeah, I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, and oh, look at that. We've even got a little overlay. One little moment to secret as we can see. Game 2. Winter. We're going to see something a little bit different from Ehome. The One Night Stalker. And it's this time they're the ones trying out the Morphling. Yeah, and not to mention the way Secret started this game, they had two heroes TP to top and to bottom to secure good ward positioning so they could, they could understand whether E Home is coming to do aggressive lanes or not. So they're gonna find out that probably it might actually be dual lanes because Lamb is actually at top, so they might be sending the Rubik top to actually help out the Night Stalker okay. in the early phase. Because earlier today we saw a game where O11 was on the Night Stalker where he was left alone, I believe. It was uh, I can't remember against who, but he had a really hard time, and we were talking on the panel a, a bit about the Night Stalker being left alone, and he had a really tough early game. And this time, they're switching things up, they're sending him support, so hopefully the Night Stalker will have a much better early game here. They could have going to get a D-Ward here, with uh, Paladai shouting what 
I believe with their early vision, so they were able to pinpoint a location of E-Home spot. Can we eventually we'll see how uh, Envy does do this game? We saw uh, early, in fact, one of the games was Custom with Envy, where he played up against CDC. He had a tough time in lane of the Clinks, but he did have to deal with a tri lane there. So he should uh, have a, a bit of a fairer time now just against the dual lane, even though it's a fairly beefy one with the Night Stalk and the Rubik. They'll still have to be careful about getting caught out of position. Uh, the other lane's Misery dealing up with this Disruptor, and of course, Morphling combo, and the mid lane matchup. Uh, we heard the panel, a few kind of unfavorable comments about Wimrange at the moment in this meta. Would you agree this is certainly one of the weaker mid laners at the moment? Yeah, she's not as strong as the other mid laners, obviously, like uh, the Invoker. <laughs> obviously, the other that we see a lot is Puck nowadays, so... But it's one of, like, we has comfort here, so... Yeah. Sometimes it's really important that you want to pick a hero that is extremely comfortable instead of picking the yeah, so uh, as we, uh, there's a kind of suggestion in the last game we saw, and maybe struggle. It, it just, it didn't feel like the same invoker that we saw earlier from Weeha. So, I mean, they're just like that. Play your win Ranger Alam R, and you're gonna be fine. That's the strat that Secret are going for this game, and that's indeed what Puppy's given him. Yeah, and if you look at uh, the lanes right now, Tide is getting a good amount of experience. I think, I think Puppy actually denied one of the creeps early, earlier before the. In, uh, before the creeps uh, started to go to the lane, he removed one of the creeps of the offense, so Tide has been able to get a lot of experience here, and he has the Iron Talon persecuted, so he can move to the jungle if he wants to. He has enough levels to do that. He's gonna a bounty rune at bottom, and Puppy is gonna secure the double damage at top. Yeah, I think certainly over over the games that I've seen today of Secret, one thing that you really can't fault is, is Misery's Tide and, and Puppy's Enigma. That's been pretty much two of the most solid performances that I've seen today here from the side, so yeah. Secret are going to be very, feeling very comfortable having those uh, in the, in this game. I mean, against the draft of E-Home though, do you feel they have enough to deal with the kind of the wombo combo that Secret are going to be coming with them uh, during the mid-game? Um, they still have like really good insight of their own, the Disruptor ultimate, like some plus the Warlock Golem, so only whoever gets a better initiation would have uh, a really big advantage in terms of team fight, and not to mention the vision game, the panel mentioned as well. Night Stalk's vision game giving a um, good amount of advantage in terms of when to take the team fight and when to take off people with win. So that would also be really important for Ehome, the Aghanim's timing of uh, 011 this game. The top lane, Envy on the CS4 team for 1 compared to 16 for 3. So things are all across the map looking fairly even. There's a slight edge in the mid lane for the Warlock. Um, ahead of, of we have, I don't know, to be fair, we are closing the gap now. And there's no one really breaking away, but I guess you've got to admit though, in a game where the laning stage seems to be going even, you've got to favour the side that's got the jungler. Yep. That's a really good point, and not to mention the tight 1 versus 2 is getting a lot of gold and experience. So this is looking really, all, all the lanes are looking really, really good for speaker right now. So, yeah, they are very, very content with their position, they are farming all of their heroes, they're going to have a fork lineup and mid lane. Weeha, is he going to, no, he's going to be fine. Bottle charger and popping the fire fire to make sure that he's oh, oh yes yeah oh he he has actually been struggling both the games against uh, old chicken like both games the last game he got slow killed by the Lina the invoker and this game getting chased back to base uh, in four minutes so not looking good for we have again once more in the laning phase uh, puppy is uh, he's going to be ready though to make up for any mistakes that happen we're seeing this very very quick leveling once again this game four and a half minutes and he's going to have the level six online the first black hole to yeah. net a key kill let's see where he actually goes from here he's always like really good at making the right rotations and getting the most from the black hole not getting any kill that he sees but getting the best kill that he gets so night stalker has uh is he's going back i know he just looked Full gank right now. Night time comes, so he's gonna go for. Smoke. We're gonna smoke with Kaka, yeah. And there we go. Let's see where old Eleven and Kaka are gonna head towards. Potentially, I'd imagine they've got their eyes on the Weehaw here. I guess maybe. Oh, oh no. to try and catch out, yeah, Puppy before he's able to make a movement of his own. That could also be something. It would pay off very nicely for Weehaw. They want to place wards on Kaka as well. Kaka has two wards, so they want to be able to assess the situation where the, the enigma is nearby so smoke will pop so 11 knows that they know that puppy's around so let's Radiant's see whether they continue to push forward attack. or they decide they're gonna back off and go for we have yeah the ping from uh from oh, they actually came back onto we are so saying come back to me guys we want to try and catch this wind ranger but we have quick on the fingers there with the wind run unable to get the glimpse but at the very least they're able to get a ward down into the jungle so 
old chicken would know whether puppy is actually rotating to middle to get uh, to try and be aggressive on the warlock. So that's still a, a really good ward there for E home. I think they, they did ping it out, but I think Secret might be aware that they did do that and missed that. Uh, no, no sentries coming out yet. No. But it was ping nonetheless, so maybe Secret going to be aware of that and, and just playing around that one. Yep, nevertheless, uh, I think Secret is still really content with their positioning. Uh, right now in the game, they're still getting a lot from all the lanes. Only downside is Riha is the game once more back to base. He's because he's unable to control the rune because they have a jungler and Ehome is roaming around with the Night Stalker now. So it's very difficult for Win Winrunner to actually control the runes at this stage well, of the game. Be careful with the courier here. Oh, uh, no, no, not careful enough. But Ehome will be able to find that one there with a little bit of an adventure into Dire Jungle. Now we're going to see a secret can make them pay for it. Jackal isn't going to latch from Weeha. The mini stuff should be enough to hold all 11 in place, but time for him to get the damage in and he will. That will be your first blood there for the Clinks. The main loser courier was empty, but secret able to get the first blood there for Envy. Still pretty even, I, w I would say like Korea kill still gives out a goal for your whole team to score the first bird, so I think at the end of the day probably e -home are a little bit more happy with that because Secret rotated uh, almost the whole team except for the Tide over there to actually get more one kill. So fairly even trade there and right now if you look at the CS, Gia is actually starting to fall really far behind compared to Old Chicken. Old Chicken is just dominating this lane. And he's just, well, of course working towards that Midas first here on the Warlock, just about 500 away from having the recipe done on top of the gloves. Interesting yeah. kill build as well. He has two points in Fatal Bond, three in kill, and one in up kill. He, is a, he has a bit of everything. <laughs> uh, talking about having a good time, Misery. He's getting a lot of space Jeez. down there. Yeah, I think like, this is like a dream game like yeah. for Thailand. So. Being left one versus one, and you're able to actually get so much from the laning phase. Can't really do much to actually stop in because Hyde is really good at one versus one. The, th the thing is, um, CT wise farm is, is good 48 for 19, but Envy, he's not far behind, and, and Envy has had to deal with two heroes yeah. giving a bit of a beatdown in the top lane. But when you compare the offlaners, that's the difference. The, the Hyde has been getting a lot more compared to the Stalker, and Night Stalker had lane support from the Rubik. So. At the end of the day, I think it's still Secret coming on top of that. Uh, it's uh, it's certainly feels like, and going back to once again the, the fact that there's that puppy Enigma, and he's yeah. starting to rack he up the goal. He still hasn't made his first move yet, so yeah. we have to pay attention to whether puppy makes the move on to try and kill the Morphling, or if he tries to go for the Warlock. Like, these are the two big kills that he can black for here right now. Yeah. I, I, I want to say, in all the uh, Enigma games that we've seen from puppy today, uh, he has not whiffed a single black off. He's, every single one has been bang on. But you still want to get like what you can get, like you. Oh yeah, I mean, it's the one man ones. Oh, we've seen people put it on cooldown, just huge. get any kill you find. Yeah, yeah. especially in a game where the pace is, is like this. We're nine minutes in. There's only been the one kill on secret, which was off the back of E Home, yeah. Yeah, in themselves a little bit too aggressive. And I, this feels like again in the first series of the day, CDC versus secret. CDC kind of played like this as well. That like it did give secret a lot of space and allowed them to get away with this greedier positioning, having this jungler. And it's only going to make things harder for Ehome as they do go into the mid game. Yep, and Envy, he actually gets a very early medallion. I think we talked about whenever there's sometimes when you actually play Clink on Dias, but you want to have uh, a medallion just so that you can actually take the sun early. And they obviously have the Enigma to actually help them out with that as well. So see whether Secret are going to be successful in getting a very early roll to help them out uh, with the early medallion. And obviously, Envy is also leading the lane for the Lion to get his uh, level 6 he already has and Envy is also starting to put pressure on the enemy team every time he's missing off the map so he's able to actually do a lot of damage just with levels that's like the benefit of having a safe lane team he can actually pressure the enemy very early by being off the map all the time and we can see um, at the moment, ever since that first bit of an advance into the Dire Jungle, since then they've been just keeping yeah, it you safe. Can, you can see how they are actually distributing the farm. Like, yeah. once uh, Envy started to farm over here, he moves towards the ancient area, he farms the ancient, he farms the camp. They are distributing their farm very nicely over across the board for all their heroes and giving a lane to Paladar as well to farm his blink eventually. He's halfway there, 1k go more for the blink on Lion. And bottom lane, we see Eho making a move here with the stuff that coming in. Uh, it's gonna be a tough one. Misery does have a Ravage there. It's gonna drop the Golem for this one. Goes straight in onto Misery. There is enough people slowing him a little bit, but Misery, he's just walking this off. 
He doesn't give a damn that there's a golem punching him in the backside. He'll walk himself away. There's the rabbit. They jump on the TPI, catching onto the golem here. They will manage to find the killer onto the morphing. The disruptors are full as well. Secret turning up. There's the BM black hole. Let him get through. Three dead on the side of E home. And maybe even more. That shackle, not quite sure how it left, but I thought said it should turn out. And some from Pylite Dice. He's walking in. Hasn't quite got mana there for the finger. A little bit too far here, Pylite Dice. He's still got a few friends about. He's going to hex up old 11. He's trying to chase down Misery and get the void. Play of each other. We are coming back in. The shackle again. Old 11 to the final tree standing on the sideline. There'll be a heal from all to get into the man. It's not enough. Power shot from Weehar, bringing them all the low. He's going in for the kill. Weehar, he's trying to step it up, but he may have stepped a little bit too far. Telekinesis now, the response from Ehom, trying to find him return. Power shot off the mark, Weehar. He tried to go for the plays. He tried to go for the style points. He ends up paying with his life. Nonetheless, five to one now for Secret after the back of that punch. Are they done yet? Like, Envy is still behind looking for stragglers. Oh, Envy. He actually got this kill. On Here we go. Going for mana. Oh, Jackie Mouse coming for you. And well done. Carry up. That was very well done. Keep by that safe, Andy. Jackie. Come on. So, all in all, Secret got five kills out of that, that engagement. Yes. Essentially, it was a team wipe. And they only lost what well, they lost, we are. They were really, really good trade, and okay. they were. So, I mean, use their big cooldowns, they use the black hole, and they use the rabbit for that. Nice, great trade. Fuck, fuck. You, you see that? That was like a tight hunter that got so much farm, so hard to bring down, and she was able to actually last long enough to buy enough time for yeah, his team to come in. They go on misery with the That's ult. That's the bracer. Problem, that's, he, I think he survived also partly because he had bracer. He was like at 150 HP before Radiant's everything ended, tower. so that bracer attack. and the early born is now definitely helping survive through that mm. engagement. So. Old 11. I'll be about to feel the wrath of an Envy's room from Weehart. Bandit safe hold. Uh, they saw him. Yep, yeah. that's essentially there. So that would not be successful for me. Uh, Old 11 gonna retreat back into the jungle, but... You use the oh. golem and you lose the team fight 5 to 1. It, it was a good point actually for up uh, by Scant there. He did have an arcane rune, so the cooldown of the golem was only 116 seconds instead, oh, so he wanted to okay. use it. So it's... Even though it didn't find a kill, it's not great, but it's back online now. It was maybe just worth a shot. But at the same time, they gave away so much on Secret, so... Yeah, they, it did kind of, they did then try and fight around it, which didn't end up paying off. Yeah. So right now, Black Hole's still on cooldown for another 50 seconds, and because of the Arcane Rune, Warlock has his ultimate backup. See whether they are able to actually take any objectives with, with the next Golem here. Oops, and if he finds himself a pick up, he's found Kaka. Gonna yeah, try and get himself in position for this one. Can I Go on, MV. And uh, find the angle. Beautiful one, two, give it a third, and he has been caught out by the static of the kinetic field, MV. Hey, he's just gonna TP out of that. Good fight, son. And off he is. MV finding himself a cheap pick off, and e home unable to do anything to stop that. Oh, this game has been so far perfect for Secret. Everything going their way. And me able to find pickoffs and target the map. Um, the blink from Lion is it? Oh, he didn't actually go for a blink. He went for arcane boots and earn. So probably wants to go for the item build that Bam goes all the time on his Lion. The Aether lands first before mm -hmm. he goes for the dagger. So we'll see how well the item build works for him. For misery, he completes the jump. Then they're gonna catch up TTY right here. Uh, he's gonna start to get his game going in the ball cup. We'll be okay. We give a bit of space, of course, though, on top for We Hard to try and Radiant's take down the tier one fortification coming out. They're going to send Lanham up to the top. We Hard is going for early near from the team. He's going to get lifted, though. Yeah, We Hard. Uh, yeah, maybe get a bit too green. He wants the tower, and he, he is going to get it. He doesn't get the last touch. Uh, he just managed to stop them from denying it. Oh, so Pays with his life. So greedy there for We Hard. That was definitely not worth it. At the very least, they didn't get the deny, so... I see, yeah, that's, that's something, but... Roshan is gonna go the way of Secret. Um, like I mean, I was wondering when they would go for the Roshan. So finally, after putting the tier 1 at bottom lane, it's still safe enough that they have enough time to go for the Roshan. There's a thing in the 
I think more, but it seems like evil Ooh. know what's going on. Uh, yeah. there. They want a bit of this. They want a bit of the action. They're ready to jump. And now, oh, Puppy. Oh, he feeds this back. Kelly needs to jump. That's going to be the big bridge. Already pops a mess. A fade ball fun because Revenge got on coming out the stun. Catching on to three. Can he hold some fun once back at this? They've already found the Enigma. Damage is good. They can turn around. Burst down the Night Stalker. Secret find themselves a return kill here. And about going back in on this one, but the golem still up. Be a tricky one. Teams kind of awkwardly positioning themselves around the pit. No one looking to go back in yet with one of their heroes down respectively. And oh, golem just come up, controlling it here, secret. And once he is back up, we'll see if they go back in. Roshan yeah. is under half health. I mean, it's looking really, still looking really good for secret because they expanded the golem and they didn't get anything. And Secret has their Black Hole plus Ravage still up. So this is uh, looking like... It goes one, straight back, yeah. This version is, look, is looking like Secret should be able to stay for themselves with the ultimate back up. I think it's also pretty close to his dagger, so oh. Secret's team fight is going to be extremely strong once Misery is able to get his hands on the blink. Especially now that Envy's got his decimated on 16 minutes in. They might try for a kill on CTY here. Dyer's bottom tower. Just going straight into the Roshan. Um, that's just gonna melt. I'm gonna get the Aegis. Maybe the Winner Aegis? Um, uh, and he actually frees up a space for that, so I'm gonna be the one. No, he's actually not going to be I the one. He says, wait, well, you're dying a bit too much, mate. You take it. Good guy, Envy. Good guy, Envy. What a player. What a But like you mentioned, he's always not in any danger of dying, and he has, seems like he's the one always in danger, so... You don't need it, why take it? And smoke up for their team to look for even more advantage right now because they know Golem is still down and they have all their cooldowns up. They look they are looking to just further extend their advantage right now on the map. Wrapping around towards mid and Kaka. He has a he has a ghost after though, early for the clink. I think it's gonna save him for what's about to Oh! I yeah, it's long inevitable, but he still goes down there. Secret. I mean, it's a very easy kill down to Disruptor. Well, it seems like right now Eho is not going to be able to defend all that power. Uh, even with the Golem up, it's still going to be difficult because he's the Aegis right now. So. I mean, yeah, he's nearly got the Aghanims done. Oh, chicken. But so even with that, they're going to yeah, be something it, fairly spectacular. It's worrisome when the team that picks Warp is unable to take a team fight. This is definitely something to get worrisome. And yeah. TY just finishes up his not the best timing, but considering his team situation, it's still fairly reasonable. And oh, enemy, enemy behind enemy lines. Can he get another pick off here? Misery's got a ravage. See if they can find something here, MV. Who's the iron up? Misery. Oh, they've already found Lanham there with the help of Weehard. That's gonna be the first pick off, MV. Wandering around. Has been denied. There that's the blink for Misery here completely. So that team fight is gonna be really, really scary right now. As long as they get, 18 minutes in, yeah, as terrible. long as they get the jump and the, I think Warlock is the key target. If you can actually take out the Warlock before he does anything, it will be really, really good for them to secure the team. He has 18 minute nerf from Mr. Eight for this. Uh, he is the slowest fish, <laughs> not the fastest, but. He didn't have a good laning phase, so... He didn't. He had a tough time at the beginning. The Maelstrom is definitely going to help him, you know, speed up his farm. And you don't usually see Maelstroms as your first item on Green Ranger. The most common build is obviously staggering, so sometimes you go for a blink early, so that you can land your shackles. But the Maelstrom is kind of like a Midas for Green Ranger, because it helps you farm and push. And NB is once again roaming the map, trying to scout out the enemy team so he can set up an opening for you. He glimps back onto wait. Echo will TP out instantaneously from the sidelines, so don't have to find anyone there. But I'm just playing very, very carefully. Radiance I like die. He's nearly got his blink. He just decides to save straight up for after a couple so of gauntlets. He actually just goes for the arcing boost and still wants to go for blink. Huh? Interesting. I mean, this this kind of catch is, is certainly going to be what's needed against Eheim if it's you know just locking down the morphling or just catching out any little uh, wall before you can get off the golem. It's going to be huge in these fights. Not that the golem seems to be doing too much against the side of secret. We we are yet to see the effectiveness of the Ags golem game. 
do too much more with the bomb. Yeah, but it's not really that useful if your team can't actually take the fight. That, yeah. that is like the issue that Ehome are having right now. Despite having the Aghanim's Golems, but they are not confident of fighting outside of their base. Still haven't really seen the effectiveness of the Night Stalker here. He went for Midas because he felt quite far behind in the early game game. And right now, if you, we talk about the Aghanim's earlier, it's already 20 minutes. So at the very least, he has enough gold for one component here. And he still needs uh, a good amount of time before he actually reaches to that point. So as of right now, E-Home are going to struggle taking any straight-on engagements against Secret. Probably need to find kickoffs first before they are able to actually take yeah, We just mentioned though, of course, CTY is keeping up with the farm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's pretty much neck and neck with Envy on his morphling. And... He needs to be doing a lot for his team. Uh, oh, I was going to say, are we going to see the same build as we yeah, saw with Max Envy? Because right now, no one can actually make a play. If you look at the state of the game, Ehome are just Radiant putting... Oh, right now, I'm waiting for the morphling to come online, so he's going to actually use his Ethel bait to... Because they need to be able to get takeoffs before they are able to take a fight, so they need to wait for that item to come online. Right now, people are just confident in just pushing down towers because they understand that they oh, are not in on. <laughs> yep, really nice design from Old Chicken, but it still doesn't really change the face right. of the game too much. No. Still a nice play, so. That's the little things, Winter. Yeah, it's always the little things. Right? But your mom tells you. That is indeed what everyone tells you. So, if e home goes for a smoke. Uh, let's see whether they can actually get any pickoffs here. Um, Aegis just ran out, so this is the time they want to make a play. He uh, has the computer trees, um, still hasn't completed anything else. Goes for Fuser, so there goes the Ghost Scepter for the Disruptor. Let's see what they can do. Misery needs to get caught out first. The still has gone straight away. We don't want to have Misery to have any shots. But Snip still doesn't trust him. He's able to get himself out to the side here. Will still fall at the Golems. More than enough to bring down the solo Tide. E-Home, they find themselves to push. They find themselves to kill him. With no Tide Hunter, they're going to feel very comfortable for, to try and push for more here. Take the tier two. See what Secret are able to do in response to this. They'll pop the fortification. Are still without that Tide. Can they find some kind of jump? In with that, and Puppy is there. Hmm. I think that's five and goes, so Seeker might think about trying to take an engagement if they can find Jackal or a stun from Puppy. It looks like Ehom really do want to fight. They're keeping themselves right there, they know that they've got the edge. They want to use the Golems to do something at the very least, but right now they just got the kill and they can't even get the tower, so they need to feel really well played by Seeker there, managing to hold the tower and any further loss after just, after just losing tight to the Golems. So Right now, once again, Golem's down, Secret are going to look to make a play around the map. And, uh, more specifically, Envy is going to be the one shouting it out. And he's going to go straight onto CTY, he'll surge off, he goes up to CTY, blowing him back there with the adaptive strike. This diffusal blade only counteracting these ghost scepters that the side of E-Home has picked up. I like that, can he actually find the disruptor? Don't think he yeah, it looks like they're gonna be able to secure the last tier 2 tower on the map at bottom lane. The Warlock Golem is down. Don't really see any way Ehome can fight outside of their base. Ehome should be looking to just try and get as much farm as possible. Get the Agonims up on O11 and try to get the Astro Throne on as soon as possible. These are the two key items that they need to get. A secret. I'm sure they'll want to try and push it, you said. This opening now, the golem gone. They themselves have still got the Ravage, still got the Black Hole. We yet to really see anything too big coming out from Puppy in terms of the ultimate farm. Elsewise, he has been playing very nicely, but one Black Hole onto Lanham on that bottom at the end of the fight. Is there really getting things back? He had to get the blink off, no damage coming through from the side of the right? That's uh, very pretty, that, but it's not really doing too much. We harm, we get dragged in, and be going at war. One hit to Kaka, bringing him below 50% HP. So be careful there, you know. We'll pop the greaves, and we'll see if they do decide to push in for more. Taking down all the tier 2s on every lane now, so it is they just really up to secret to break the they base. They have to be very careful because the Warlock Ultimate's almost up. So the uh, Roshan's going to be back soon, so potentially Secret are going to hang on for that one. They have total map control, so there's no need for them to rush any. They should be able to secure the next Roshan. That that is obviously the safest place. Secure your map control and just 
spot the Roshan to spot on. Get the Roshan before you try and speak to Pygon again. Money coming out, CTY. He's, he's gonna have that E Blade done. He's sending out the current now to pick up the Eagle song. So E Blade yeah. right around the so corner let's for CTY. See if they can actually get big off here because right now Secret doesn't know about this. They have uh, any more smokes at the moment on E uh, Yeah, they've got one on Kaka. There's a ward there though, so if they smoke here, yeah, Secret. Yeah, they gotta be careful where they do. Look at the vision, Owen. Like, they have two vision outside of the middle lane and the bottom. Secret has really good vision to understand when their the enemy is trying to smoke. Should be able to scout it out if we're around this area. The map is just a bit of a minefield at the moment for Ehine in terms of getting away with something that Secret isn't going to be aware of. Secret themselves, the ones smoked up and they're making a the movement down towards the bottom. Can make a big jump in, puppy. And he's going to know. Ooh. Going in on the illusion that the smoke didn't dispel, maybe a little bit too. Too quick on the reactions there from public. I mean, it happens. Yeah. yeah. You see something. And you just. Down, yeah. Because if they were able to actually get that pick up, it might actually mean that they are able to push droppers. But also, a huge part of their team fight. But it's an illusion, so. I mean, it's not a, a big loss for Secret. They're still able to move around. But they still. I don't think they. Do they see the Ethereal Blade yet? Uh, I don't think they're crossfire, crossfire wards, but we're gonna see We Are. Looking to serve on Dodd 11, where Andy uh, steps in for the glory. He says that one's mine. This nice crossfire has been have Rig this game. He hasn't even completed his agony at this point. 10 minutes in, it's only looking a bit of a sad state of affairs here for Old 11. Gonna have the agony uh, set done soon on We. The courier scouting it out. So they should be able to. They're trying to go for a kill on CTY before they try to attempt to get Roshan here. So let's see whether they get it on CTY. He's gonna wait for him on TP, and we'll be fine now. We. I must get himself in position. He has got the blink, but. More proving to be a little bit too sneaky for uh, for him to catch out. And as you said, Roshan almost only with the next point. A fight to kick off Kaka. He's still got that smoke. We'll see if e -Home themselves do want to try and head over. They've got all the big ults available. Yep, they do. Uh, it's gonna be really fast though. I'm. I don't think that. Yeah, there's no way they uh, get there. In that approach is gone. It's it's gone just like that. Easy, easily done that for secret. Yeah, we had for the ultimate hunt game, and we said I don't need this agent. Exactly. We you take the swamp. Has completed his blink again. A misery! Uh, he's, he's starting up a trust fund. Until 4.3k. I, I think he might whatever he wants at this point, misery. He's, he's loving of, it. There's a lot of he good is options. loving it. So you can go for either Shiva's refresh or even. I think Agony is a really good item. Tide. Mask of Man is stateless. Definitely not a good item on Tide. Ah, wow. Well. Well, show, show us what you got. I, as you said, it's refresh it's not sure like once right now. I'm not, I don't. I don't think I've actually seen an axe tide. No, I mean, how, how good is axe tide? Is it? There's just other items that you want to be yeah, getting from it's first just every time. Good situation. Like it depends on the situation. If you're defending against an enemy that's constantly pushing, you need deep push. Obviously, axe tide is really good. I mean, it's still really good in team fights because you are able to actually use your spell from a safe distance, and it becomes. A, you can hit multiple targets with the agony, so still a really good team fight item. I think. All the uh, options I mentioned are really solid. Either the refresher, the agony, or the shiva stuff. So we'll see what he goes for here. And puppy, meanwhile, is going to come fight very soon. So. Oh, old chicken! They do have a sentry there. They didn't know that Envy was chasing them down. And Envy pops the BKB diffuser blade onto old eleven with the right stick and the second charge. They should be able to find him in. They do. Envy gets himself the kill. Becky Ma has been carrying him. He has. He's been playing. He's been a good boy. So it is the Shiva's on uh, misery. It's gonna help against the morphling right clicks. Uh, it's gonna be able to slow down the golem as well, like give them more team fight. A really solid choice. Uh, it seems like. Seeker will have a 30 seconds opening to actually try and maybe siege or damage the tower a little before the Night Stalker comes back online. Yes, they do indeed find that opening. Do they have, yeah. a, do they have a gem? Do they have a gem? I mean, at, at this stage, they have total map control, so removing the enemy's vision would be the next 
for them. Like right now, Ehome has two vision, like two wards in their own jungle, so they know that if he plays around here, they have one ward in the middle lane scouting them. So they still have a good amount of vision, despite being contained in their base past couple of minutes. Type is completed on C. What else are they waiting for? I'm getting any items. I did. They're just waiting for the delivery. Wow, well, that's out. Yeah, I guess them go. they're good to go. Everything. Up. Waiting on the car, yeah. That's the countdown that, that Secret are waiting on at this point. Come on, chop chop. Stuff delivered. Secret, <laughs> they're gonna look to try and shut this one out. But... Are they gonna do the same thing again, Owen? Split up the map, like use. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's it. The way we saw that last game, man. Yeah, like just like how. I mean, I totally can. Envy's on the right kind of hero to do it, isn't he? Yep. But this game they can probably take the head of fight with Tide and Enigma, so they'll probably just climb in down one lane. We'll see what they actually do here for Strut. Uh, I'd like to see a flashy fight now. Just even like a flashy fight. Yeah. There we are, it's so on to the tower. In the way we are coming in, it'll hurt Jackson! Now that's not even legal, and in misery goes, with the round, he catches out for MV Post, he'll see why the roots off the golem here, so he's trying to have a packer, he's going to go down to all kills from Miha, he gets the Night Stalker as well, and to hold back misery, can't break through secret with the pipe pop, they're doing no damage to Home, and they just have to sit back, slowing down, but it's slowing down the pain here as the bottom set of racks will fall, secret now heading towards the mid lane, Ehome with two heroes down, neither of them with buyback available, this is looking to be potentially a second victory here for Secret this series, unless Ehon can do something big. And as we jumping forward again with the Shiva's guard, holding back the side of Ehon. The Luke's trying to burst down the Shiva, the combo's with CTY's on them again, the Shackle! That Shackle, CTY, has to get himself the hell out of there. Side of Secret, they'll find themselves the second melee rack in the mid lane, and now they'll look to retreat. They'll want to play careful. Can they kill him? No. Answer seems like the only casualty that's such a big uh, victory for Secret there, getting second melee rack. Oh dear. That shackle from Weeha there, setting up the bottom part of the Easy setup for the tide, just brings in Ravages, the heroes behind. Not much Ehome can do there, despite dropping the golem. Oh dear, Ehome look like they are really lost right now. They are not like the team that won NBA. Really lost and different. Stars are changing a lot. They've got, they've got the refresher now. I mean, one, you know, refresher. He's nearly got. He hasn't got level 16 EV yet, so that wasn't a level 16 golem. It's, it's still something for them to. It could be big. Win the team fights because really be worried. So like every golem they've dropped this game, they can't really do much with it. They have not accomplished much with the golem from the wall. They get five man static storm. Five man double golem, fatal bonds. It's, but it's a lot of it. A lot of it. A lot of it. And they're doing it in a situation where they are well, two many racks down and, and a range wreck as well on the bottom lane. Three home are very vulnerable at this point yeah, in they time. They have the odd stacks against them, so they basically have to do their best with uh, landing their spells correctly, multiple heroes, and they need to uh, to buy enough space, you know. Morphing to active, so I think they need to be able to buy enough space for Morphing to kill the support line. Aye, Puffy. Aye, he's looking for some action here. He's popping down the midnight pulse, clearing out the area. Shackle we won't connect. CTY still sticking around on the front. The BKB trying to do his best to burst Puffy, but Puffy just pops the grease, pops the pipe. He does not care. Misery now comes in with a round two on the floor. For the tentacles tickling E home. The static swords be dropped down. They're trying to fight you, but CTY just melts. Double kill for We Are the Golems to be dropped. Envy just sits there and takes that one, two, three. There goes your Golems. GG Secret take the game and take the series 2 0. And E home, they just don't turn up at the end of the day. Warlock is going to really work out for them. They were unable to team fight in the whole, like from the start of the game to the end of the game, they were unable to win any future team fights, unable to secure objectives. When they have Warlock, that is something that is really, really bad when you have Warlock. And not to mention the Night Stalker often they draft it, and 